On May 24th, 2022, a movie by the name of The Silent Twins was released. You may not have heard of June and Jennifer Gibbons, but it'd be easy to see why they were called The Silent Twins and why everyone was interested in their story. But I'd like to pose a question. Did you know that 50% of twins develop their own language? And if you have, leave it in the comments section. But if you know any weird facts about twins, also leave that in the comments section. But this is the true short story behind the movie, The Silent Twins. We had, me and my sister spoke. We knew what we were saying. My mother had to guess what we were saying. And they kept saying, what are you saying? What are you saying? And we just say, oh, you can't hear us now. You can't hear us never. And we couldn't bother to do repeat ourselves. We didn't speak. We left it. And they do a habit of not speaking. The Gibbons twins were born in 1963 at the Royal Air Force Hospital in Aden, Yemen, and they were born 10 minutes apart from each other. They were well-behaved and quiet children, but strangely, they didn't talk until they were three years old. They didn't talk, but they often looked at books, drew pictures, and wrote small notes. But even after they were three years old, they were known to be closed off from everybody but each other. Their father, Aubrey, was in the Royal Air Force, and the family was moving around a lot but it didn't help the children at that. They became more and more closed off and still only talked to each other. And each school led to new bullies and distress due to their strange nature, lack of language, and skin color. Right before their 13th birthday, the twins stopped talking to their parents and refused to be in the same room as them and their three siblings. They also walked in sync with each other, turned the same place, same time, almost as if they were marching. And when someone saw them, they froze like deer in headlights and just stared at the person. Their strange behavior constantly exhausted their family's feelings. Neighbors withdrew from the family, from the whole family. The twins had no friends and showed no interest into letting anyone else into their alienated world. Too much for their parents. The twins were sent to Eastgate Special Education Center in 1977, a few days after their 14th birthday. They were tested for their behavior and education, revealing that they were socially incompetent and easily depressed. But they were surprisingly independent. The weirdest discovery was how the twins acted when they felt that they weren't being filmed. The most stunning example of June and Jennifer's bizarre behavior was provided by a videotape of the two made with a hidden camera. Thinking they were unobserved, the girls just played with each other, laughed and talked happily with each other. People Magazine wrote a story about the twins in 1986, and yet their weekly therapy sessions were a failure because the girls simply refused to speak. They left the school a couple of years after and moved back in with their parents, and immediately they isolated themselves in their room. Their mother, Gloria, would take them their mail and slide it underneath the door. She would leave a tray of food outside of it, and still, they never spoke to her or anyone else in the family. Yet their parents would hear them talking and laughing or even fighting behind the closed doors. So no one knew what was actually happening between the two as they screamed and fought and giggled in the privacy of their bedroom. Who knew? Writing was their main focus because they wanted to be famous authors. June, she wrote a novel named Pepsi Cola Addict, while Jennifer wrote one called Disco Mania. By now, the twins were 17 years old and becoming full-on delinquents when they weren't writing. They routinely got in violent fights with each other, and after some legal trouble that ended with an injured fireman and over $200,000 in damages, they were sent to Britain's high security psychiatric hospital, Broadmoor. It was one of the largest and most dangerous maximum security mental hospitals throughout Europe. Their time at Broadmoor was summarized by a doctor who witnessed their behavior. At Broadmoor, the doctors found June and Jennifer to be deeply disturbed, even dangerous. The two took turns eating, one eating one day, while the other starved. And though they were split up in housed in cells and opposite ends of the hospital, nurses often found them eerily frozen in the same distinct poses. This went on for 11 years. Until doctors agreed to transfer the twins to Caswell Clinic, a lower security facility in Bridgen, Wales. While in Broadmoor, interviewer and journalist named Marjorie Wallace met the twins every week. She was in the middle of writing a book about the twins, and they were happy with it. 
and gave her their diaries, poetry, and more. But as time went on, darkness spread among them. June wrote in her journal, We have become fatal enemies in each other's eyes. We feel the irritating deadly rays come out of our bodies, stinging each other's skin. I say to myself, can I get rid of my own shadow? Is that even possible? Without my shadow, would I die? Without my shadow, would I gain life, be free, or left to die? Without my shadow, which I identify with a face of misery, deception, and murder. This went on for over a decade. Finally, the twins were going to be transferred to a less secure hospital, where they would serve another year and then be released into the public. Wallace last visited the twins at Broadmoor Hospital, and something very strange happened. This is from Wallace during an interview with NPR. I took my daughter in, and we went through all the doors, and then we went into the place where the visitors were allowed to have tea. And we had quite a jolly conversation to begin with. And then suddenly, in the middle of the conversation, Jennifer said, Marjorie, I'm going to have to die. And I sort of laughed. I sort of said, what? Don't be silly. You're 31 years old. You know you're just about to be freed from Broadmoor. Why are you going to have to die? You're not ill. And she just said, because we decided. At that point, I got very, very frightened because I could see that they meant it. And then they said, we have made a pact. Jennifer has got to die because they said that the day that they left Broadmoor, the day that they were free from a secure hospital, one of them would have to give up their life to really enable the other one to be free. I later found a little note that they had written, which said that, Two is your laughing and that two is your smiling and now I'm dead. That two is your crying. The day that they transferred, Jennifer died of swelling of the heart. They were loaded into the van, and when the van began to drive away, Jennifer slumped over on June's shoulder and fell into a coma. She was declared dead at 6 p.m. that night. There was no evidence of foul play, no poison in her system, and still, doctors have no exact reason for her death. However, Wallace thinks that she simply willed her own death. She was 31 years old. The family was devastated. They knew their lives would never be the same, nor would June's. One of their sisters said, They should have never been locked up in Broadmoor. I know that they did wrong, but they didn't kill anyone. It totally ruined their lives, and if it were me, I would have sued Broadmoor. I would not have let them get away with that and what they did. But it was my parents. It was their choice. And they always said that they would not bring Jenny back. The family has since moved on in peace, including June. June now lives near her family in the town of Milford Haven in Pembrokeshire, Wales. When asked about the hospitalizations impacting her family, Greta, one of the other sisters, said, June has never gotten married, and she's never had children or fulfilled her ambition to be a writer. She just lives on her own, in silence, just like she did before. Place. Now these two little girls were walking one behind the other, heads down, and um, as if they were in some sort of a chain gang. I'd never come across anything like it before. I'd met funny people before. I'd met uh, mad people before, cooks and all the rest of it. June had stopped eating, she'd stopped moving, she'd stopped dressing herself, and she would sit on her bed in the morning, um, having, I don't know whether she'd slept, she certainly hadn't undressed, having laid on the bed, she would sit crying in a sort of catatonic state with liquid from her nose and her eyes and her mouth hanging in a great beard down to here with the unit staff mopping her face, not speaking, not going to the toilet. I mean, obviously, if we had to. We had, me and my sister spoke, we knew what we were saying. My mother had to guess what we were saying. And she was one that was pretty worried about us. Thank you for watching. This was the true short story behind the movie, The Silent Twins.